So I've modded several different control panels and I just discovered that on a couple of them, the ground output on your x-axis potentiometer is reversed on a couple of different control panels. So you have to pay attention to yours if you want to complete this mod. So this is a stock mod um, and in my original tutorial, you can see in carefully in my pictures, the x-axis potentiometer has the red wire coming off the top, which is the ground, the middle one, the brown is the right, and the black as your left. All of these control panels that I modded were exactly the same with the red on the top as the actual ground. But if you're having issues with that and uh, the ish, um, your x-axis being reversed when you set it up this way, check your x-axis potentiometer as well. I found that this one actually was stock, had the black on the top, brown in the middle, and red on the bottom. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to reverse it and make your black your ground, the brown's going to stay the right, and the bread is going to be your left. So all you have to do is just pull this pin out. You can switch these cables around and these wires, or you can rewire it in here and then put your ground for your black into here like I did, and then just uh, look carefully where it's coming out of. So from your potentiometer, the top wire is your ground no matter what color it is. So make sure you make that your ground and hopefully that should fix any issues for folks that are having issues with their x-axis potentiometer and it reading correctly. So here's a tip I got from another YouTube user, RepairSelt, about using these JST connectors to extend the connections on your stock yoke wires. So you can plug in these wires without having to cut them. And this is a great option for those that ever want to revert back to using a stock yoke, or if you're just scared about cutting the wires on your actual Star Wars yoke. So you're going to need two different size connectors here. Make sure you get the right ones. These are JST connectors, which stands for Japan Solderless Terminal Connectors. There's a two pin connector and a three pin connector. So the two pin connector is an XH so JST XH spacing. So XH stands for a 2.5 millimeter spacing between the pins. And the PH spacing for the three pin one is a PH, which is a two millimeter spacing between the pins. So just remember JST XH for two pin, JST PH for three pin. You're going to need four of these for the buttons on your yoke. This is the triggers and the top buttons. And then the three pin one are going to be for your two potentiometers for your X axis and your Y axis. So let's start with the X axis and Y axis. As you unplug these from the circuit board, you're not going to use the circuit board at all. This is the three pin connector. Uh, although it does reach to your APAC here, it's a little bit of a tight fit. So using the connector cable, now you're able to follow the same yoke wire diagram that I have on the screen and make sure that you follow the directions there. So your red is still your ground wire, your brown is your right, your black is your left. So just make sure you follow the right colors from here when you use these extender cables. Again, this can plug straight into here or you can use the crimper pliers that I've showed you in my other video to attach the crimper um, ferrule tubes and then connect them to your APAC. Same thing for your buttons that are on the two pin connectors. You're going to connect these here. And so depending on the ones you get, you have to watch the wires. Because when I connect this, remember that the black is the ground wire here. But if you look at the colors, they switch. So if I'm going to connect this, now my red is the ground wire. And my black wire is the one that I'm going to plug in accordingly using the same yoke wire diagram. So just make sure you pay attention to what you're plugging in. It might get a little confusing. But these extenders are a great option for you to be able to plug in reach the cords a little bit more without having to cut anything. Here's a detailed look at how to wire your yoke. Once you get your buttons installed and where you want them placed, and you have everything installed on the back with the micro switches where you want them, I like them having facing in. I have my APAC wired to the top here. I'm gonna get these prepped. These are all the supplies we need. Extra encoder wires. These are encoder wire extenders that I just mentioned. The zip ties, as well as adhesive mounting strips that we're gonna be able to mount the brackets down. After you've unplugged the potentiometers from this really circuit board, we're actually not going to be using this board at all, as well as this 4-pin connector. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this zip tie as well. And then I'm going to unscrew this and get rid of it so that we can get it out of the way and not have it as part of our mod. It just uh, You can leave it in if you want, but just for a cleaner look as you tie everything down, you can go ahead and just unscrew this screw. And this little really circuit board is just going to pop off with this four pin connector. Just set this aside, put it with your PCB, you won't use it. 
Now let's add all of our encoder wires for the buttons. So these are HAP style connectors with a 0.25 um, millimeter connection. So make sure that these are the right size. I like to have my blacks as the ground, which is gonna be the top one. And then the white one's gonna be the middle one here. So go ahead and attach all of these. Now I'm gonna add in the extender wires that I just talked about. So let's start with the potentia meters, which are the three pin ones. So after you pull them out, let's plug them in. And then your two pin connectors for each of these. So again, these extender wires from the stock yoke are completely optional. This is again, a good option for those that don't wanna cut their stock wires in case you wanna go back to stock. It does make them a little bit longer, so we're gonna to have to tie these down as well. But this is a great option again for those that don't wanna cut their stock cords. So here's a sped up video of me wiring down the yoke using the zip ties and adhesive strips to mount everything from the outside in. And doing this again really helps out with the cleaner look instead of tying it into your APAC first. So you can see I start with the outside wires in and start making kind of an L shape to get into the APAC itself. Lay down your adhesive strips and start zip tying things down so you can start. Now I'm using the ferrule crimping tubes to add in the tubes to each of the wires and slowly am adding in the buttons into the APAC accordingly. So follow my original yoke wire diagram so you can get the buttons into the right area. Uh, now I'm getting the actual uh, yoke wires stripped and ready. And so these wires, you do have to pay attention to the colors. And so make sure you follow the colors before you plug them into your APAC. And so that way, once you get them plugged in, then you can uh, go ahead and tie them down. So this is one that you have to be a little bit careful. And now I have all these extra ground wires that I need to splice together. So what I'm doing is I'm tying them together, I'm going to cut them off, pinch each one off, and then I'm going to add them all into a single uh, crimping tube uh, using a spade connector. So this spade connector is going to connect on, I'm going to add in a uh, heat shrink tube, use a heat gut to tie it down, and then use an extender cable on the back side to be able to attach a single wire into the ground wires. So this is just another option to make things a little bit cleaner as I've tried to, uh, you know, use ground wires that can plug into all into one different outlet. Um, so I did all the grounds for that side. And now I'm doing the same thing for the other side where I'm taking all the ground wires from the left side, these blue cables cables there as well as the volume switch which I did mod putting them together heat shrinking them down and then adding them into the ground wire so that's the completed wire guide now that we have all of our wires tied down and installed into the APAC we're going to power our LED buttons using a power wire harness. So this is an upgrade from my previous mod. In my first video, I showed you guys how to use kind of some old USB cables that you had in your house, plug it into a USB extender, and use one of these power bricks that you can get from an Amazon Fire Stick or your phone charger, and it would light up the LEDs just fine. This was great at the time where I didn't have a power wire harness and I just wanted to use what I had lying around my house. I split the USB cord open, tied in these quick spade connectors, and installed them onto my buttons. This is a perfect option if you really want to go cheap, if you want to do the work yourself, or I would recommend getting a pre-existing installed power wire harness. You can get this from DIY Retro, some other sellers sell it as well. So this connects via a 12 volt adapter that you're going to plug into one of your Y splitters. And then this daisy chains a positive and a negative chain to each of your buttons. So this is a much quicker, easier option instead of making this yourself. Uh, this is about $9 plus shipping. So I would recommend this saving a lot of time to do this. Plus this is a true 12 volt adapter setting that you can do for your buttons. Uh, the buttons are rated for a 12 volt rating uh, and I did learn that even though that this does light up the buttons this brick is only a 5 volt power source and uh, it does light everything up just at a lower um, wattage and uh, you know just draws a little bit less power so it's not as bright but the 12 volt adapter for this power wire harness works perfect so I'm going to get this wired up. So I start in the top left, add in an anchor, and use my zip ties to start tying down the wires as I plug them into each button. You're going to want to test the positive and negative side to make sure it lights up properly, so you may plug it in just to see if you're getting it tested right. After you work your way around the board, you'll have some extra wires, so make sure you zip tie everything down so you don't have anything else hanging around. Now that the LED power wire harness is wired up, um, I tied this down so that I can have power cards going out the back on the top, and then we're going to test to make sure that the power works for everything as well. Um, so go ahead and grab a 12 volt adapter. You can use the one from your stock arcade one up monitor that will work as well. Um, and then this is going to plug into this uh, cable right here. So this is a 12 volt adapter. This is going to plug into your power wire harness. We can see what lights up here. 
Um, so I didn't look and see what was positive and negative. So you can see that I got these ones right, uh, right off the bat. Um, but without testing it, I just need to reverse these two and it should light up as well. So if you are testing it out, you could plug it in and try touching it as well while you're, while you're before you wire it. Um, but this way it's a little bit safer where you can just pull it out, make sure you're touching it by the rubber sleeves. If you swap them out, that should work as well. So now you have that one swapped and then you're just going to swap these two as well. Let's go ahead and swap these two sides. All right, there we go. So now that everything is tested, all the buttons are wired up very bright. So that's how the final product should look when you have everything wired and clean. So this is uh, me wiring up one of my yokes with a, a lot of the extra buttons here, but there's so many different buttons that we need to ground into just these two ground sections. So I'm going to get all of these button grounds, which are the blue wires here and the black ones for these small ones. And I'm going to wire these all up and put them into a single connector into this ground. And then for all the yoke wire buttons, there's six grounds for the four buttons and the two axes. And then I have seven more buttons on this side. So I have 13 different grounds that I need to be able to get into one input. So what I'm doing is I'm bunching all these grounds together into one single outlet. And then all the blue and the blacks here, I'm going to put into a, another one, combine them into two a single strings that's going to go into here. So I'm just kind of showing you what I did was cutting everything and getting it into one. Um, and then I'll show you what I did in a second. I'm going to take one of these uh, spade connectors and use my crimping tube set and then get all the grounds for these blue and black wires. There should be seven cables here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just make sure that they're all there. Twist some of these together. So one giant ground cable. that's there. We're going to use our crimping tool to get as close to everything as possible. Crimp this down. So now we uh, got them all connected into this one spade connector that's here. We're going to use some extra heat shrink tube to get some extra protection. So let's tie this down and use our heat shrink gun. Now that it's all in one giant ground, these are two kind of ground wires that I splice into this single ground. So this is going to come down and then I'm going to put another heat shrink tube on this. But essentially the grounds will all connect into this quick connect here and I'll get it tied down. So we're going to do all the buttons for the yoke into that same type of splicer and then get it into those two. So that's how you connect multiple ground wires into the single ground outlet. So the grounds, again, you can just splice them into one or two different cables and then get just a few going into the hair instead of having 13 cables going into one ground outlet. So here's a really quick video of me wiring up a premium mod that I did with several different square buttons in addition to the original four buttons here. So you can see I take my time crimping all the different tubes to plug everything accordingly. Follow the yoke wire diagram and follow the wires from the original colors. Make sure you plug everything to the APAC accordingly. I still set up my mod with the two big red buttons as the number one and two buttons on the player one side. And then from there, you really have options to plug in your buttons anywhere you want to. The analog APAC has 12 buttons on both the player 1 and player 2 side. And so you'll be able to map those buttons in any emulator that you can and actually make them working arcade buttons for any game that you have. Another thing that I did on here was get my volume buttons working on my original Switch mod. So I cut the wires there and I was able to plug the brown as the ground wire and then the red and the black buttons as a left and right. And then map that to an arcade button on the APAC. So you see here that I'll plug them into the player 1, uh, number 12, 11, and 11 side, the 1A, 1B side. So then I'll use a program like Joy to Key and then map that arcade button, the switch itself, to move my volume up and move my volume down. So that's another thing you can do with these mods as well. Nice little upgrade. But here's what my finished premium mod looks like. <laughs> 